We've seen you actually make quite a bit of acquisition activity, particularly in the area of robotics, 3D printing, I'm thinking yeah. of. They have been targeted largely at European companies, but what about the acquisition opportunities here in Boston and, and the East Coast area, yeah. and to continue to build out that part of the business? So there's no question in our mind that additive manufacturing is an, an enormous opportunity for the company and for the world, and, and it'll be every bit as revolutionary as what'll happen in the digital transformation in the industrial internet. We absolutely believe that. Um, we, we bought two big uh, concept labor at our camp, two big uh, laser printing companies in, in Europe last year. But that's not, we didn't start there. We started with an acquisition of a company called Morris Technologies right here in the U.S. about five years ago. And that got us going. And we've been investing and doing an enormous amount of research around 3D printing or additive manufacturing over that period of time. So we didn't just start with these acquisitions. These acquisitions give us new modalities of technology that allow you to make parts differently and different kinds of parts. And we'll continue to invest and in, in leverage off that. But it is going to complete remake how people think about designing products or parts or finished product uh, and how they build it you know the great thing about additive it's a constructive process not destructive so you know you only use the material you need to make the product and you can make it in a fidelity that you could never do with today's machine technology mm -hmm. this is the greatest machines in the world today won't let you make things as intricately as 3d printing so it opens up a design space that's really never ever existed you say you didn't start with those acquisitions. Do you finish with them? Are there more to come? We're, no, we're always going to continue to reevaluate how we put this puzzle together and whether there's opportunities to, to move the ball farther down the field and accelerate. We'll, 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 we're wide open. And, and Boston fits that way, too. We have partnerships with Mass Robotics and yeah. uh, a deep relationship with MIT Labs, a deep relationship with Northeastern's Labs, where there's a lot of 3T printing research going on. Uh, both in metals and fibers, and and so there's a real ecosystem here to move the to, to move the the whole practice forward. You're talking about investment and money spending, and I know you're a man who's got to look at cost cutting yeah. at the same time. Yeah. I can't have a CFO in front of me without asking, how are you able to square that circle? Because of course you've been asked to keep, take two billion dollars out of the operations. How, yeah. how are you achieving that? Well, this is about the future, so we, we have to continue to invest in the future. This is this is where the company's going for the next decade, two decades. So. In, in the long run, these are the kinds of investments we have to make. At the same time, we got to run our own company currently as efficiently as possible. And, and so we can do this. We can walk and chew gum. We can do this. The, the, one doesn't have to be at the expense of the other. As a matter of fact, I think running the company more efficiently today gives us the opportunity to invest in these technologies that are really going to be the future of the company for the next 10 or 20 years. And as you make these big commitments, these big investments, rehoming yourself at a time of political change, how do you feel that the political environment fits in with this? We talk about talent pool, what Boston brings to you. Well, mm. there's worries about immigration coming from some of those leading institutions. Mm. There's worries about some of the funding perhaps going into biotech, which is the lifeblood of Boston. Mm. What do you think about the, the Trump administration in that respect? Well, I don't have specific comments around the Trump administration. I think from a GE perspective, we're a global company. We serve uh, global customers. We have a global workforce. And that's the company we are and that's the company we're going to run.